How do I treat my MTHFR genetic mutation? There are some simple things you can do, and then there are some more involved steps you might want to take. You may have heard there's a lot to it, but if you just take care to do one thing at a time, it's not that overwhelming. Try to remember that this is your life, and so it's about the quality of lifestyle you want to cultivate. And that's what will be most valuable to your long-term health. Think of a marathon instead of sprint. Stay with me through the end of this video and we'll cover the specific nutrients that you might want to take if you have MTHFR, some of the key things you might want to avoid, and some lifestyle changes you might need to make in your home. I've been treating my MTHFR since 2011, long before most people had ever even heard of it. I learned about one of its main nutrients for treatment, which is methylfolate, through an OBGYN uh, who was able to change his son's life using that key vitamin. I was convinced not only by the science I learned from Dr. Rollins, but also by my own personal journey, as well as the overwhelmingly positive responses that my customers have had with the methylfolate. Many have sent testimonials telling us how powerful this specific form of folate has been for their mood levels and their quality of life. And I know the right kind of folate totally changed my life, which is why I became a methylfolate expert, and I'm obsessed with ensuring that the methylfolate I take and put in my body every day has the best chemistry and quality on the planet. So where will you want to start with your MTHFR therapy? First, easy things first. What not to take? Folic acid. Specifically, I'm talking about synthetic folic acid that you get from a vitamin supplement or from fortified foods. This particular form of folate does not convert well in the body of an individual with MTHFR, and therefore you can't properly absorb or use it. And in fact, it may actually be causing problems for you. So just avoid taking folic acid as much as you can. Secondly, consider preparing your body for the active ingredient methylfolate, which will actually bypass the MTHFR gene mutation you have and directly give you the form of folate your body needs to absorb and use. And so by prepare, I mean take some nutrients that ensure your bio pathways have the supporting nutrients that your methylfolate will need to do all of its downstream jobs. The general recommendation is to take a multivitamin that doesn't have any methylfolate or B12 in it at all. Start there with a mild dose. If you're feeling good, then assume you can add another important supporting nutrient like magnesium into your daily routine. But be sure you get a very bioavailable form. Uh, consider supersomial magnesium. Trimethylglycine or TMG is another nutrient that some folks will want to take, especially if they know they have high homocysteine levels. You would only know this if a doctor has tested you. Anything above 9 for homocysteine is considered elevated. And lastly, for this step, you might want to also consider adding some B12 into your routine. For most, hydroxylcobalamin will be the form that's best tolerated, but it's also typically the hardest one to find. Some folks might already know that they tolerate one of the other forms, like methylcobalamin, which works directly with methylfolate. So those may be helpful, but do not take cyanocobalamin. It's the non-converted form and most folks just can't convert it. So it's not helpful for them. And in some cases it can make one sick. One time I had a doctor give me a B12 shot and it was a high dose of cyanocobalamin and I had horrible symptoms for a couple of days. And later I learned that my body can't convert cyanocobalamin. So now I don't take it ever. Uh, now to get to the big step, which is actually to take some methylfolate. And this is the active ingredient that actually gets around that MTHFR mutation and gives your body that much needed burst of life force, which comes from having the correct form of folate hitting your cells. Now you may have some additional questions like how much methylfolate should I start with or what dose should I target taking on a daily basis long term? Or are there any side effects that come with methylfolate? And if so, what are they? They're all good questions. We actually have a methylfolate dosage video as well as a side effects video that you should watch to get the specific details on exactly how uh, these things happen and work. Uh, we'll link to those in the description, so look for them down there. I'm gonna suggest you take the time to watch those videos. They're important and I think they'll make a difference for your journey and how you choose to take methylfolate. So, but I'm gonna move on to the next thing that we wanna cover in terms of treating MTHFR. Uh, and that is trying to clean up your lifestyle a little bit more. And why do I say this and what the heck do I mean by it? Uh, well, one of the big issues MTHFR causes is a reduced ability for the body to detox itself from the bad things that we start to accumulate more and more over time. Uh, for instance, heavy metals, BPAs, phthalates, uh, glyphosate.
phosphate or the stuff that's in Roundup, environmental toxins, chlorine, chloramine, VOCs, right, from newer buildings that are super insulated and don't breathe well, uh, gas fumes, and so many more. You kind of get the idea, right? The bad stuff that our bodies are taking on faster than we can actually get rid of. So how do we clean up from all of these things? Start by avoiding the things that you don't want to be accumulating. So stay away from the metals. Don't put your foods in the bad plastic containers. Use glass or other safe alternatives. Don't spray your yard with weed killers that contain glyphosate. When this stuff becomes airborne, you're susceptible. So stay inside if you see your neighbors are doing it. Do what you can to make sure your house can breathe. And if it's super insulated, consider a whole house system like Easy Breathe to help move the bad air out and away. Use good water filter in your home that can filter out the chlorine and the chloramine for your drinking and your cooking water. Consider using an electric stove instead of gas. Don't stand next to the gas tank as you're pumping gas. Uh, when you're behind a truck or a bus that's spewing exhaust, right? Use the recirculating fan so that the black stuff isn't going into your car and your body. Consider diet changes. Eat more natural, organic, whole foods like fruits and veggies. Try to lessen the amount of processed foods that you eat regularly. Avoid antibiotic and hormone-fed meats. Eat smaller meals more often and eliminate inflammatory foods wherever you can. And here's a tough one. Consider kicking gluten and dairy to the curb. Get them completely out of your diet. It's a hard one to do, but for many who have MTHFR, they also have significant issues with dairy and gluten. Gluten and dairy can cause leaky gut, which then creates antibodies in the bloodstream, and immune reactions, which bring inflammation, because your body thinks it's gotta protect you from these invaders. Probiotic can be a big help, with leaky gut, so if you're not on a good one, consider a spore-based probiotic. They're incredibly effective. But stop inviting these inflammatory invaders to the table. No matter how they call to you through your cravings, be strong and just say no. Antibodies from dairy can actually fight with folate for receptor access. So just leave these bad guys behind and see how you do for a couple of months, completely free of both. You might be amazed at how you feel when you look back. I realize this is one of the hardest things to do, but if you try it and you find you feel so much better, then you can decide, do I want to eat what I love or do I want to feel better? And you'll be making an informed choice. Personally, I've found the only way to go off gluten and dairy is to have some solid alternatives in place. And psychologically, it might take a couple weeks to prepare yourself for the undertaking. Take the time you need and give it a shot. Your health and your quality of life will really thank you. Okay, so we've gone through a lot of the what to avoid things. Now the things that you'll want to do to try to detoxify what toxic burden you currently have on board, what your body needs to get rid of. One way to detox is by sweating. You can do this through exercise, infrared saunas, or biomats. This is something that people with MTHFR don't naturally do much of, and they really need to do more. Obviously, when you're sweating out the bad stuff, you will want to be replenishing with clean chlorine and chloramine-free water as well as adding back in those electrolytes and trace minerals that you'll be sweating out. Some use pink Himalayan salt as a salt source that's rich in electrolytes. Other things to consider. Do I have mercury fillings in my teeth? If so, you should heavily consider having a qualified dentist to remove and replace them for you. If you have carpets, they are magnets for germs, molds, mildew, and many other not so healthy contaminants that can affect the body. Maybe you want to replace those with wood or tile. And lastly, there's some additional supporting nutrients that are suggested for folks who have MTHFR, which can help them detoxify their burden and or just feel better. Please note that not everyone can take them, so try one at a time for a number of days before you switch anything up to see if any of them cause you trouble or grief. And if so, assume it's not for you. And or maybe you need to try a much smaller amount to start. Some of the nutrients are N-acetylcysteine, or NAC, vitamin E, probiotics, DHA, EPA, vitamin C, glutathione, psyllimarin, or in other words called milk thistle, curcumin, vitamin D3, zinc, citicoline, natokinase, and riboflavin 5-phosphate, or B2. So we just barely touched the surface here. I'm sure you have a lot of questions. Feel free to leave them in the comments below like our video, share it with a friend so that more folks can get some additional information on MTHFR and how to treat it. Thanks so much for sticking with us.